Good morning and welcome back. Yeah. Oh, so I've been gone for quite a while now. Um, the last time I did a video, I told you guys that I still had about 10 videos that I had made and needed to edit and post. And I still have about 10 videos that are made and needed edited and posted. Uh, I've been extremely busy uh, with work and life and family and church and you name it. Uh, if it can happen, it's happened, and if it can keep me busy, it's kept me busy. So no time for the hobby. Uh, again, this is just my hobby. Uh, I buy and sell guitars and tinker with them, and maybe someday it will turn into more than just a hobby as I get older, hopefully, right? Yeah. So anyhow, I've been uh, working on a friend's speedboat. Uh, you guys probably seen a couple videos that I posted of that, joy riding and during the testing. Uh, we still got a few more things to do to that boat before uh, I'm done with that job. And I got a couple other things that I need to get done before I can come back to my hobby. Uh, we have lots of properties that need mode and you just name it, there's always something to keep me busy. So uh, today we're gonna do a quick video. Uh, it's not going to be uh, about guitars. Uh, actually, it's going to be about this right here. So I guess we'll start with this case. You can tell it's a crossbow. Uh, so we bought the uh, case at Dunham's uh, for $29.99. I think that's a pretty good deal considering they want anywhere from 100 to 200 bucks for a really nice case. I just wanted something to keep the dust off. So anyhow, uh, I know nothing about crossbows, uh, hunting, anything like that. So my wife and I did a bunch of research. Really, you guys are gonna do this now. So we did a bunch of research and, hey, I told you guys, they sat here for over an hour on my shoulder, just quiet as can be, not a peep. Now I wanna talk to, you, to them and you are being a bad bird. You gonna let me talk? Huh? All right, so anyways, we were watching YouTube videos on um, crossbows, compound bows, and all that, and I don't remember what the brand was that we had settled on. I think it was a Raven and a 10 point. And the two that we were looking at were very compact with the reverse bows. Uh, I think they were only like 15 inches wide, uncocked, uh, very nice units. Once we got to, uh, oh, where did we go for this? It was Cabela's, I think. It was a long drive. I spent several hours driving to Cabela's. Once we got there, we realized the two crossbows that we were highly interested in were almost two grand. So you're talking 1,700 and 2,100 uh, for those two different units. Uh, for somebody that knows absolutely nothing about hunting or anything like that, I think it would have been really stupid to spend that much money on a unit that's probably going to sit in the closet for the most part. Um, and if hunting and stuff like that is something that I end up not enjoying or not wanting to do, then I have a huge investment in a piece of equipment um, that I won't use. So uh, without further ado, I'll show you what we ended up settling on. Uh, this is an Invader X4. And uh, it's made by Wicked Ridge. Well, that's the brand, Wicked Ridge, but it's actually made by Ten Point. So uh, the Ten Point Query or Quiver, again, I don't know anything about this stuff. So uh, the Ten Point brand Quiver, I think is what you call it. And the scope is on it because this is their, their brand. So uh, the neat thing is the guy told me, even though... 10 point builds these and owns this company. They get paid every time they put the 10 point brand quiver and uh, scope on it. But anyway, so uh, we opted out for the electronic, um, what do you call it? The thing that pulls it back. Again, I, I don't know anything about this stuff. So the cocker, I guess you would call it. So you just take these here and you pull them down and you hook them onto that and then you, you pull it back and that 
locks it in here. Uh, I can do it just fine. My wife has some trouble with it. She's going to have to uh, practice doing it. But if it was any harder to do, um, I would definitely probably get the uh, electric thing. But those are so noisy and clunky and it adds a lot of price to it. So if you're strong enough to pull it back, I highly recommend just getting the manual one. Um, I much, much would have rather had it without this in there at all and had the one you put in your pocket and pull it back just because it would make it a little less clunky um, and you wouldn't have this big thing here. There's some other ones that have a nicer uh, butt on the stock and, and handle and all that. But then again, you start going up in money. Um, I can't remember exactly how much this was, but this, um, the three boxes of arrows, and these two heads, which we're going to talk about in a minute, I think was like uh, eight, eight or nine hundred bucks, something like that. And then the rest of the stuff we got at uh, Dunham. So we did get uh, three packs of the Wicked Ridge arrows. Um, the guy said, why, why do you want three packs? Normally people only have three arrows on their thing. And it's like, well, my wife and I want to practice. And if we bend one or whatever, they said you're supposed to use the Wicked Ridge brand. Well, we can't get this brand anywhere around us. So you got to drive two or three hours to go get the stuff or order it online. So we figured with us practicing and all that, uh, if we bend an arrow, lose an arrow, break an arrow, whatever, we'll have extras. Um, and then we can also set up uh, arrows for hunting and arrows for practice. So as far as the hunting goes, um, these ones here, these uh, Montec M3s, they're solid. Uh, they come with a Band-Aid because they're so sharp. When you take them out of the package, you actually might get cut on them. Uh, and then we got special wrenches that will go over the arrow so you can tighten them on to the arrow itself or the head. I See, again, I don't know anything what I'm talking about. It's all brand new to me, but I'm going to learn. But these ones here, I was reading about them and being solid, you can reuse them over and over. And also the way that these are cut, um, if you get a sharpening stone and you put a little like a three in one oil or sewing machine oil or whatever on the stone, you can lay these flat and keep them sharp the way that these blades are. So you can keep flipping it and you can sharpen these over and over and over. So that, that was a, a really good selling point to me on these, being solid, not breaking, being able to sharpen them over and over and reuse them multiple times. Uh, so those are my, my best ones. Uh, I think those were like $40 a set. These were actually very cheap. You get six arrows and it was 50 bucks. Now that sounds like a lot of money and I, I was like, wow, 50 bucks for for some arrows, but the one I was telling you about with the reversed bows or whatever you want to call it, uh, the arrows for that, three of them were a hundred bucks. So these are real cheap. Um, then I grabbed these at Dunham's. Um, don't know how good they are, but they were pretty cheap, 25 bucks and 16 bucks. Uh, that might sound like a lot of money, but when you start looking at these things, um, even these at 40 bucks were cheap because I mean, they, they can get 50, 60, I've seen some heads, mechanical ones that were like $80 and that's just ridiculous, especially all the reviews that we've watched on arrowheads, um, uh, watching them shoot the ballistic gels and all that. Nine out of ten times, those mechanical ones don't even open or deploy right and stuff. So I think that's all of a gimmick myself. Um, so the solid ones I've learned are the best and the most hardy, anyhow. Um, and then these ones that have the, the holes in it, they're, uh, 
not as sturdy as these, but they're sturdier than most. And I took a set back. Um, they were called Toxic. Really, you guys? What the hell are you doing? So anyways, the arrows that uh, I took back, I should have did the video before I took them back. They were a gimmick. So basically, it had three circles on it and a bunch of different things that went all over in different directions. And I watched some videos on it and they did work. Okay, so if you were hunting a deer, the toxics that have the three circles on it, basically when it hits the deer, it makes spaghetti out of it as it goes into the deer. And if it hits their ribs or anything like that, all the little fancy round things and all that, they get all bent up. So they're basically a one shot and done. So I couldn't see spending 40 bucks for three arrowheads to use one time. And if you miss the deer or whatever, and you hit the tree or whatever, then it's gone. But um, I did get these for practice too. So everything I've got is a hundred grain. And I don't know much about that, but I know everything they said use 100 grain on it so uh, we got these practice tips here they're just smooth and then i got these funny shaped ones just to give them a try out um, these here are for small game so rabbits and stuff like that so i went ahead and got that this is a dry fire so you're not allowed to shoot these with no arrow in it which i don't understand why but you can't so you have to once you cock it and you're ready to use it and you don't use it you stick this in here it's it's pretty heavy i guess it it slows it down so it don't damage the strings and and pulleys so that is a dry fire stick so i guess you just stick that in there and you fire it into the ground and that's how you decock it and then this is just uh, directions with the 10 point sticker and, and whatever so there you go somehow this piece is supposed to come off too um in store way but yeah i don't i don't think i'll mess with it just put it in a bag like that and leave it be. So that was, uh, that was my quick video here. New toy. We don't, we don't know how to use it. We haven't tried it yet. Uh, we did buy this. <laughs> which will stop 425 feet per second. And this was like yeah, 50 bucks. So this was part of the, the deal on that. I got this, that, the three packs of arrows, and the two Montec M3s, and that was somewhere between eight and 900 bucks. And then at Dunham's, I got the bag, uh, I think we got the dry fire. Yeah, we got the dry fire arrow there. The other two packs of arrows, so all in all, uh, with everything here, we still only have about half invested in it as it would have cost for just that one crossbow that we were looking at. And I, again, I can't remember what models they were, but it was a 10 point and a Raven and they had that reverse bow, real compact and small, but I'm not going to spend two grand on a bow unless it's something that I end up really enjoying doing. So that is that. And to update you on the rest, I've been kind of cleaning my guitar room up. And I'm not done. Uh, this is not decorated the way I want. This is just kind of organized I still have to finish painting that wall over there and everything on that wall and that wall has to come off and then we got to fix all the little holes in the drywall and paint that and I think I'm going to do something to cover the 
furnace pipes there. Uh, I hung my, these are all my dad's right here. These are really cool. So I hung these up temporary. He wanted me to sell them. Uh, my wife wants me to buy them and I told her, I said, you're probably not gonna wanna buy those, they're expensive. So she said she's gonna talk to my dad about what he wants for those. There's another one up here, his royal crown. He's hung on to them for decades, so they are old. They're not porcelain. Uh, there's, that one might be. But the, I know the other ones over there are enamel. So we're gonna do a video too on uh, chainsaws one day. So uh, my wife has a DeWalt 20 volt. That's not here, but here's her MS193C. I had a 200T for her and it had the top handle. That's why it was called a T. Basically the same saw. Um, I sold it and bought her this one because with holding it here, you can, your wrist can pivot and it can bite you really good with having the handle the back handle you have more control over the saw so i wanted her to have that so we're gonna we're gonna do some videos on on this because we have a lot of still equipment and we use a lot of this stuff on our property um the ms251 uh this saw and this saw i bought in 2010 um take very good care of my equipment every time i use them completely tear them down and I use a 200 degree steam machine to clean every single part and put them back together. Uh, but yeah, I've cut well over a hundred trees uh, with these two machines alone and uh, they look like they're brand new. So this is the new model. So this is a 2010 this is a 2020 MS362. Again, we'll do a video. There's a lot of different things about these. Uh, Here's my favorite one though, the MS500i. Uh, that is the size and weight of an MS441, and it has the power of a 660. So it's a mean mother mother, and it's fuel injected, and it's all go. Uh, the day that we opened this saw up, we were putting a 36 inch bar on it, and my wife was helping me and all I did was grab this chain and roll it forward to make sure it was on the sprocket right and when I did that it cut straight through her finger because she had her finger down towards the end and she got eight stitches in her finger from me just barely rolling the chain it was so sharp after those eight stitches uh, she cut a tree that was almost four foot across with eight stitches in her finger with that saw uh, we'll post a video of that too so but yeah, just uh, trying to get the, the room uh, organized and set up here. I did get rid of a uh, bunch of those old drums that were sitting over here. This set here, here, I'm probably going to piece back together. If not, I'll just get rid of it too. But um, that's a pretty good set that I, I got. Just missing a few pieces. And I don't know. So that's, that's pretty much it, you guys. Uh, I haven't been able to be down here and do anything that I'd like to do just to, to do for fun because I've been so busy with uh, work and church and mowing and family and all that kind of stuff. So uh, I just figured I'd do a real quick video and tell you guys um, sorry that I haven't been doing any guitar videos. I'm sorry I haven't got the ones that I have done up. Uh, my wife is usually the one that will edit my videos and thumbnail them because I have no idea what I'm doing. Um, so this video will get posted with no thumbnails and, and whatever. It's just going to be what it is. But uh, she's extremely busy uh, with her work. She's a uh, big wig corporate lady so my guitar stuff is the least of her worries so i'm going to try to learn how to do all this stuff on my own and i'll start doing the thumbnails and editing i'd like to um, be able to insert things instead of having to show you guys on my phone look what i found you know um, i guess uh we'll we'll see what happens i'm gonna try to do some thumb thumbnails tonight on the videos that I have done already, but uh, I'm not promising nothing because I'm no good at it. 
But this video, I'm just gonna post so you guys know. I'm trying real hard to get back down here and finish the amps and the guitars that I've got going. And I've got other projects I wanna start, but I haven't even finished the other ones. So uh, yeah, just quick update. Uh, busy as heck and i wish i could be down here talking to you guys but i can't right now so uh hope you guys enjoyed this video uh, if you have any hints or suggestions for for me on this thing because i don't know what i'm doing with it uh, go ahead and put a comment down below and uh, thank you guys again for watching don't forget to like and subscribe and stay tuned we will have more videos